How do you interact in Bixrati? Welcome to the second part of this mini tutorial series. After having a look at the setup and demo scene from the Interaction SDK, in this video we are going to build our own interaction from scratch with grab, distance grab, poke, teleport and ray interaction. And with the help of this tutorial, I hope you guys will have everything you need for the MetaQuest Presence platform Hackathon, which will happen very soon between March 25 and May 13. So if you want to challenge yourself to build the Mixrati game, now is the best time to do this by joining the event for free with the link you will find in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's go to the scene folder, then double click on the sample scene. Beautiful, as you can see, this is the sample scene, which is completely empty, of course, because we started with an empty project. Now what I'm going to do is select here the main camera and press on the delete button because what we are going to do is add our own camera from the OVR interaction complete rig. Okay, so let's go on the project folder here and search for OVR camera. And as you can see, nothing is appearing here on the asset. But if we select here, not asset, but all, as you can see, we can see some stuff that are part of the packages. That's why we couldn't see them. And the prefab that we want is here, the OVR camera rig interaction, which is the prefab that contains both the camera rig for VR, but also all of the interaction that we've seen. So let's simply drag it in our scene. Beautiful. We can double click on it and we can see it here. Now I'm going to create a crown by right clicking, go to 3D object, plane. We can make sure that the position is at 0, 0, 0. And what I'm going to do is go to asset, right click, create material and call this material black. We can click on the color next and make it a bit more dark and drag it on the plane to change its color. Beautiful. Next, what I'm going to do is right click, go to 3D object and then on cube and we can reset its position to 0, 0, 0 again. Put it a bit in front of the player and moving it up a little bit. I'm going to also press on R and scale it a bit more to make it look like a table. And there you go, now the environment for our game is made. What I'm going to show you next is how to use some of these interactions for very simple case. The first interaction that I want to show you is of course the grabbing. So let's right click again, go to 3D object, cube. We can recenter the position to 0, 0. We can press on R and scale it up a little bit and move it up on the table like so, beautiful. I'm going to duplicate the black material and rename it red. I'm going to click on the color and change it to red and assign this new color on the new cube. Oh, and by the way, the shadows are super weird right now, but we can fix this if we go to edit project settings. Then if we go to quality and down below here, I'm going to select the shadow projection from stable fit to close fit. And as you can see now, it seems way better. Okay, so how can we grab this cube? Let's rename it first cube grabable. And what we need is first a grabable component. Beautiful. Now the grabable component will tell you what happens when we interact with this cube. And of course, in our case, the cube will be grabbed and will follow our controllers. But what's still missing is to say how we can grab with this one. And for this, we can simply click on add component and add a grab interactable. Beautiful. Now on this grab interactable, we can drag here the grabable on the point table element. And by the way, we can also click on add component and add a rigid body to this one, which we can drag here on the rigid body. Now you can either put uh, the rigid body to is kinematic, which will mean that the object will have no gravity or no force when you move it. But if you want to have a physics-based movement, what I advise you to do is to leave the schematic to false right there and to also add a physics grabable component. Beautiful. Now you can also reference the physics grabable over there. And now everything is ready. We have now everything made to interact with this cube. So one way to find out, and it is to click on play. Okay, so here you go. If I put my hands close to the cube, and that I press on the grip button, as you can see, everything is working and I can grab the cube, which will have some physics movement when I move it, which is awesome. There you go. But as you can see, we cannot grab it with the end tracking. So to fix this, what we can do is simply go back on our cube grabble and add this time a hand grab 
interactable. Beautiful. And now if I click on play again, as you can see, I can grab the cube with now the controllers, but with hand tracking as well, which is amazing. Okay, so now that we've done this setup to grab with both controllers and hand tracking this red cube, let's try to grab it from far away with the distance grab. So very simple. Let's select this cube, press on Ctrl D to duplicate it and put it to the side. Okay, and now that it is duplicated, we simply need to add a distance grab interactable for this cube to be grabbable with the controllers from far away. We can then drag here the grabbable on the pointable element and do the same with the distance hand grab interactable, which will allow us to grab it with the hand tracking. Now everything seems to be set up correctly. One thing less, and it is to test this by clicking on play. Okay, and there you go. Now, as you can see, if I grip this cube, I can grab it directly from the distance grab, which is awesome. Okay, now let's do this for the poke interaction. So to do this, we are going to create an empty game object right there, which we can call poke interactable. We can then right click, go to 3D object and add a quad. Make sure that the position of this quad is at 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to press on R and scale this quad a bit down. Beautiful. Now we can take the parent and move it anywhere we want, maybe on the side like this and rotate it to face up. Beautiful. Now I'm going to drag the red material onto the quad like this. And now let's see how we can set up this poke interactable to build well poke interactable. So let's click on add component, add a poke interactable component. Beautiful. As you can see, it needs a surface patch, which is basically the surface where you can touch this object. So to do this, I'm going to right click, go to create empty, call this one surface. And what we can do is add a plane surface component. There you go. Now, if I click here to enable the gizmo, we can see this plane surface, which shows that we will be able to touch the poke interactable basically everywhere, which is something that we don't want. So what we can do is to restrict the surface by clicking on the add component and add a clip plane surface. Beautiful. We can drag the plane surface on the plane surface parameters here. And as you can see, we need some bound clipper. So let's add component, search for bound clippers. So basically this will clip the surface with the bound that we set here. So maybe let's set the size to 0 0.1 on all size like this. And I'm going to reduce it a bit vertically as well on the Z axis. And now it look good like this. I don't know if you can really see it clearly because here my table is white. But anyway, the shape seems to be good and fit nicely here or quad. So what's left is to drag the bond clippers on the clipper surface. And now let's go on the poke interactable and drag the surface over there. And now, as you can see, we can see a little gizmo that will display where the poking will start and where it will end. So basically, you will be able to start poking over there and the selection will occur when the poke is right there, down here. Now what we can do is select our quad and move it up at the start of the poking, which I believe is at 0 0.03. So yeah, this seems good. So now it is correctly placed and we want it to have a poke interactable visual. This will allow us to have some visual on this poking. And now let's drag here for the poke interactable, the poke interactable on the parent, and for the button based transform, the surface. There you go. If I click on play and then I try to poke this button, as you can see, it works. We can poke it with both the controllers and the end tracking. That's awesome. And basically, if you want to trigger anything when you interact or push the button, you simply need to add here an interactable Unity Event Wrapper. And in our case, let's maybe drag the poke interactable over there. And when we select, what I want to do is drag here the quad and change maybe the mesh renderer material to be black. We can copy here this event. And when we unselect, we want to pass the event, but instead of black, we want it to be red. So let's see how this works now by clicking on play. And there you go, as you can see, it correctly works. When I push the button to the max, it changed color. And when I unselect it, 
it goes back to red so everything is working and it is time to go on to our next interaction which is the teleportation so to teleport let's go here on the project and search for teleport we can search to all and what i want to have here is the teleport hot spot so basically if we drag them in our scene we can maybe increase them a bit to 0 0.05 and this will be hotspot where we will be able to teleport. We can go and put them everywhere that we want, like this. Now, if I click on play, there you go. As you can see, if I try to teleport by pushing uh, the, thumb thing, the thumbstick forward, as you can see, I can teleport to one of these hotspots, which is awesome. But maybe you want this whole plane to be teleport interactable. So what you can do is simply select this plane, add as a component a teleport interactable. Beautiful. Now, as you can see, you need, of course, a surface. But what you can do is simply add a collider surface and drag here the mesh collider for the collider, then drag the collider surface on the surface. And this will turn this whole plane collider into a teleport interactable zone. So one thing that you can add is to also show the reticle on this plane, which you can do by clicking on add component and add a teleport reticle data teleport. And it is to add here the reticle data teleport and set the reticle mode to palette target. Then you can simply here drag the reticle data teleport on the data parameters of the teleport interactable. Beautiful. Now, if we click on play, Beautiful. Now, as you can see, we can teleport anywhere on the plane. This is amazing. And still here, the teleport anchor still works. And we can teleport over there on this particular point on top of be able to teleport anywhere. Okay, that's awesome. Already four interactions that we've seen together. But now it is time to see the last one, which will be to interact with a user interface with our ray. So to do this, let's simply right click, go to UI and select here the panel. Now, as you can see, this creates a giant panel on our screen, which will be a child of a canvas. Now the canvas is set to overlay, which means that it will be overlaid on top of our screen. So what we can do is simply set it from overlay to world space, then send, change the scale to 0 0.01 on all axis and recenter its position at the top to 0, 0. Now, if we double click on the canvas, as you can see, it is now placed at the center of our world and we can move it up, maybe put it behind our table like so. We can also press on T if we want to shape it differently. And what I'm going to do is right click on this canvas and add a UI button text mesh pro. There you go. We can press on R and scale it a bit up if we want and maybe duplicate. These are just buttons to test the UI. So let's add a scroll bar maybe next and increase as well its size. Now the big question is how can we interact with this user interface? And the steps to do so is to simply go on the canvas here and add a pointable canvas. Next, we need to drag here the canvas here on the canvas parameters of our pointable canvas. So now that our canvas is pointable, we need to say what kind of interaction we can put on it. And in my case, I want to interact with the ray. So let's add a ray interactable. Beautiful. By the way, you could also add a um, poke interactable if you wanted to poke the UI. So let's drag here the pointable canvas for the pointable element. And as you can see, we need again a surface. So what I'm going to do is right click, create empty, call this one surface add a component and add a plane surface like we've done previously. And we can maybe clip this surface by adding a plane surface clipped, drag our plane surface over there, then add a bound clipper. Now the bound clipper is super small, so we need to increase its size really a lot. I think that, yeah, 1,600 would fit here for the X value. For the Y, let's increase it a bit as well. Beautiful, and now everything seems good. Let's add the bounce clipper over there. And now let's go back to our ray interactable and drag our surface right there and select our clip plane surface. Now everything is ready. With this, we should be able to interact with our canvas, but one thing is missing. If we go to the invent system, here we have the standalone input module, which is 
responsible to set some event when we interact with a canvas. But in our case, we want to remove this one and add instead a point table canvas module. Beautiful. And now everything should be ready. Let's click on play to find out. And there you go. As you can see, I can interact with this beautiful canvas right there, just with the press of the trigger button. And if I put down my controllers, as you can see, it also works with end tracking as well. And there you go, guys. This is the end of this tutorial where we learned how to set up basic interaction with the Interaction SDK. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. And if you want to get access to the source code of my videos and exclusive content, join us. Link in the description. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.